All right, so this is the Midweek Recharge. This is May 13th. Uh, you get a devotion from me and the music today uh, from Sister Laura Owens, pianist, following uh, this um, devotion. And it's entitled, Mountains to Move, Rivers to Cross, Follow the Furniture. From Joshua chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, after three days, the, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God carried by the Levitical priests, you must break camp and follow it. So what did this command mean, and why would God care so much about a piece of furniture that it lead the way? Well, we get a clue when we peer inside that ark. The stone tablets upon which the finger of God had written the Ten Commandments were inside that box, a sign of God's desire for relationships. A pot of manna was also inside that furniture, a reminder of God's gracious provision during the previous 40 years. And we see that in Exodus chapter 16. One other item was included in the ark, Aaron's rod, a stick that miraculously grew leaves and almonds, revealing the power of God to do anything he wills down to the smallest detail, and that's exhibited in number 17. So three historical reminders, three witnesses to God's provision, protection, and power. Now, the ark was the Old Testament equivalent to Emmanuel, God with us. When this chest led the way, it meant God was out in front. He would, so to speak, take the first steps into Canaan. Canaan. The people were to follow his lead, to pursue his presence, to come after him. Now the Israelites were about to cross over to that promised land, the one flowing with milk and honey. Were they to turn back and try another means of entry, they would encounter insurmountable hurdles. But the Jordan looked defiantly uncrossable as well. The river overflowed its banks throughout the harvest season. The normally gentle Jordan was now a raging river, swelled to flood stage. Currents reached up to 40 miles an hour when the Jordan floods. What is more, the plain that surrounds this river was packed with tangled brush and dense growth. The prophet Jeremiah mentions the many thickets of the Jordan in his account, chapter 12. So now picture the scene. All Israel is encamped on the sloping hill beside the Jordan. The priests are about to bear the ark by uh, rods upon their shoulders as they march toward the white waters of the Jordan. And everybody understood the point. God intended for Israel to breach the Jordan with him. But it could only be done if they focused on him and followed only him. Many centuries later, the true ark would come among us, the living Emmanuel. The ark contained the Ten Commandments. Jesus fulfilled the law. The ark preserved the manna by which God fed the people in the wilderness. Christ is the bread of life. The ark held a symbol of God's power to bring life out of death. Jesus is indeed alive from the dead and seated at the right hand of the Father. And so Hebrews 12 calls us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith. And so as people gaze at the seemingly insurmountable challenges these days, filled with words like infection, mask, unemployment, quarantine, crisis, it's easy to conclude that they're stuck in the wilderness away from the abundance of God. Can we just be allowed to go to school, please? As the body of Christ, we can't see our way clear either. And we don't know what's lurking under the rushing waters of that Jordan, of our Jordan. But God can turn a no way into a highway. And so will we walk by sight or by faith? Do we really believe God can handle the impossible? What is impossible with men and people is possible with God. God is about to reveal the steps that must be taken in our lives and in our church community if we are to move from grounded to grateful, from marooned in the present to marveling at God's future. So as we consider the formidable obstacles that hinder us right now, it can feel like we're facing that impossible task between here and there. 
But these things are no match for God and no match for the God of the uncrossable. He knows how to get you from stuck to triumphant. The experiences and decisions reported in this chapter of Joshua were a major breakthrough for Israel. A whole new generation learned that victory depended totally upon God. So what do you do when you're facing the impossible? You do what Peter did when he walked on the water, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the ark who came in the flesh. The minute Peter takes his eyes off Jesus and saw the raging sea around him, he started to sink. So these days are a great test of our faith. We simply follow the movements of our ark, the ark incarnated, incarnated, Jesus Christ, so that where he leads, we will follow, fixing our eyes on him, the ark. In fact, instead of us carrying the furniture across the unfordable, our Lord, in fact, conveys us in his sturdy and fine furnishings of resilience, perseverance, faith, hope, and love. Amen. As you digest these words in this devotion, click on some music by our own Laura Owens to guide your reflection.